Super crocodiles, giant snakes, and scary sharks, these are four super heavy predators that could eat a T-Rex. Number 4. Dinosuchus This is the most exciting matchup because there's evidence that this fight actually went down. Dinosuchus is an extinct genus of crocodilian related to the modern alligator that lived 82 to 73 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period. Although Dinosuchus was far larger than any modern crocodile or alligator, the beast looked a lot like today's crocodiles, only enormous. It could grow 35 feet long and live 50 years. It had large, robust teeth built for crushing and its back was covered with thick, hemispherical osteoderms. Its diet was based on sea turtles, fish, and other aquatic and terrestrial prey. However, it coexisted with some large dinosaurs and certainly snacked on them from time to time. Edwin H. Colbert, a distinguished American vertebrae paleontologist and prolific researcher, restated this hypothesis more confidently in 1961. Certainly, this crocodile must have been a predator of dinosaurs. Otherwise, why would it have been so overwhelmingly gigantic? It hunted in the water where the giant theropods could not go. In fact, a couple of tyrannosaurs have even been found with bite marks on bones that match the jaw of Dinosuchus. In one case, the wound showed evidence of healing, which means that a true fight took place and the croc wasn't merely scavenging. It's hard to say for sure which beast was the hunter and which was the hunted, or who won the fight, but these paleo nerds voted 60 to 40 in favor of Dinosuchus, who almost certainly had a more powerful bite. Dinosuchus is generally thought to have employed hunting tactics similar to those of modern crocodilians, ambushing dinosaurs and other terrestrial animals at the water's edge and then submerging them until they drowned. So, are this fossils and researches showing us that the great Tyrannosaurus rex, the Earth's most famous extinct predator, wasn't the most terrifying animal alive in the late Cretaceous period? That's just crazy. Number 3. Titanoboa Deep in a South American jungle, a huge snake once stalked its prey. No animal had a chance. Titanoboa, considered to be the largest known member of the suborder Serpentes, thrived in the tropical jungles of South America some 5 million years after the extinction of the dinosaurs. The death of the giant reptiles left a vacuum at the top of the food chain and Titanoboa gladly stepped in. Working alongside the miners, paleontologists have unearthed thousands of Cenozoic fossils in Sarahan, a vast coal mine in northern Colombia. Approximately 58 million years old, these fossils date back to the early Paleocene and represent exotic plants, river fish, crocodile-like predators, and big old turtles with 5.7-foot shells, to name a few. Fossils from 28 of these giant snakes have been recovered here. Unfortunately, we have yet to locate a complete skeleton. Instead, the scientific community has had to make do with an assortment of ribs and vertebrae, plus some skull material. According to evidence, it grew up to 42 feet in length. That is as long as a semi-trailer and weighed as much as 2,500 pounds, about twice as heavy as a polar bear. At its thickest point, Titanoboa was 3 feet wide, which is longer than a human arm. Its enormous size is thought to be closely tied to the climate of the Paleocene. Snakes have metabolic rates that are influenced by the temperature of the ambient environment, so the warmer climate of the Earth during the Paleocene period allowed cold-blooded snakes to attain much larger sizes than modern snakes, what would explain the enormous size of Titanoboa. Longer than the Tyrannosaurus rex, Titanoboa serahonesis is the biggest snake known to science, living or extinct. Titanoboa's attack didn't depend on poisonous venom, but it killed by constriction, and this mega serpent squeezed with a crushing 400 pounds per square inch of pressure. Although T. rex and Titanoboa lived in different times and on separate continents, what if these two monsters met in a battle to the death? Honestly, the T-Rex could probably take this one easily, outweighing its opponent by two or three times. The Titanoboa kills by constriction and would have to get itself wrapped around the mighty dinosaur while avoiding its jaws to have a hope in hell. But still given a choice between meeting one or the other alone in the woods, 
Would anyone honestly pick the snake? Number 2. Megalodon Megalodon, meaning large tooth, was not only the biggest shark in the world, but one of the largest fish ever to exist. Estimates suggest it grew to between 15 and 18 meters in length, three times longer than the largest recorded great white shark. But what did Megalodon look like? Most reconstructions show it looking like an enormous great white shark, but this is now believed to be incorrect. Emma Bernard, who curates the Natural History Museum's fossil fish collection, helps us to get a better understanding. A lot of reconstructions have Megalodon looking like a bigger version of the great white shark because for a long time people thought they were related, explains Emma. We now know this is not the case and Megalodon is actually from a different lineage of shark, of which Megalodon was the last member. This mega shark likely had a much shorter nose or rostrum when compared with the great white, with a flatter, almost squarish jaw. Like the blue shark, it also had extra long pectoral fins to support its weight and size. But without a complete megalodon skeleton, it's hard to figure it out. In fact, almost all fossil remains of megalodon are teeth. Sharks continually produce teeth throughout their entire lives. Depending on what they eat, sharks lose a set of teeth every one or two weeks, getting through up to 40,000 teeth in their lifetime. This means that shark teeth are continuously raining down onto the ocean floor, increasing the chance that they will get fossilized. Fossilized megalodon vertebrae about the size of a dinner plate have also been found. There is also a megalodon fossil found in Peru that apparently has the brain case and all the teeth with a small string of vertebrae, says Emma although I have yet to see high-quality images of the specimen. So, this extraordinary information may help us create a better picture of what these gigantic predators looked like. Although Megalodon lived after the extinction of the Tyrannosaurus, what if they had come face to face? Well, probably T-Rex would have looked positively puny. The shark might have been more than twice as long from teeth to tail and might have weighed ten times as much. Megalodon teeth grew more than 7 inches long. Even if this battle could have happened, it couldn't have been a fair fight. The prize would go to the beast with the home court advantage. In water, Megalodon wins easily. On land, Megalodon is easy prey and a very large T-Rex snack. Number 1. Lyoplorodon Now it's time for the last alpha predator heavyweights, Lyoplorodon. It was the apex predator of the middle to late Jurassic seas that covered Europe. The largest species, L. ferox, is estimated to have grown up to 6.4 meters in length. Currently, there are two recognized species within Lyoplorodon. From the Colovian Kimmeridgian of England and France, L. ferox is well known, while also from the Colovian Kimmeridgian of England is the rarer L. pachydirus. However, only L. ferox is known from more or less complete skeletons. Lyoplorodon ferox first came to the public attention in 1999 when it was featured in an episode of the BBC television series Walking with Dinosaurs, which depicted it as an enormous 82-foot-long predator. This was based on very fragmentary remains and considered to be an exaggeration for Lyoplorodon. Sizing estimates for Lyoplorodon have been changing for the entire time we have known it existed, but one thing that is clear is that it was never the 25-meter behemoth it was shown to be in that BBC documentary series. The most complete specimen was estimated to 639 centimeters long, with a skull 126 centimeters long. This 25-meter size created much debate, as no paleontologist thinks Lyoplorodon really got this big. But in spite of that, two positive things can be deducted from this exaggeration. On the one hand, the compelling and dramatic scenes in Walking with Dinosaurs certainly increased public engagement and interest about these less famous reptiles, compared to the dinosaurs, for instance. On the other hand, another hidden positive of the WWD Lyoplorodon controversy is how it inspires genuinely healthy discussions about the scientific accuracy of popular portrayals of prehistoric animals on the silver screen. It reminds us to do our best to keep to the best available scientific evidence. Did Lyoplorodon keep growing throughout their lifespans like some reptiles do today? Would there be some long-lived Lyoplorodon approaching 8 meters, 9 meters, 10 meters. 
These things are surprisingly hard to estimate, especially since we lack enough fossils from more fossil specimens of this particular species. Without a more complete understanding of the life cycle of an animal and how bodily proportions appear over the ontogenetic cycle, it is impossible to know for sure. So, in a confrontation with a T-Rex, who would win? Well, it is difficult to figure out this scenario as they wouldn't have fought off on equal terms. Four strong paddle-like limbs suggest that Liopleurodon was a powerful swimmer. Its four-flipper mode of propulsion is characteristic of all plesiosaurs, and although this form of propulsion is not especially efficient, it provides very good acceleration, a desirable trait in an ambush predator. In conclusion, that makes it a strong and deadly marine predator. However, on land, T-Rex would have won the battle without any doubt, since Liopleurodons had no chance on this battlefield. The Tyrannosaurus rex, Tyrant Lizard King to Latin translators, may reign as Earth's most famous extinct predator, but it wasn't the most terrifying animal alive in the late Cretaceous period. If you want to know more about this topic, we recommend you to watch the following video.